Stocks, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs? What do all these things mean? And which one should I be buying? Sit back and relax and let me do the heavy lifting. I'm gonna break down what these different terms mean and which ones are more advantageous for which reasons and how they can benefit you in your retirement or your investing strategies. If you're ready to become a smarter investor, then smash the like button and let's get started. For more videos on investing or personal finance or even paying for college, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to check out my other resources and recommendations, you can head to the description or go to thomasnapfe.com. All right, so let's start at the beginning with what even the stock market is. It's basically just a marketplace where you can buy individual small portions of companies that exist in the real world. You're not just buying pieces of paper or electronic data that doesn't mean anything. You're actually purchasing a partial ownership of a company that is existing in the real world doing business every day. The people that run these companies have decided to split the company up into these tiny slivers of stock called shares. When you go and buy a share, you are purchasing one of these tiny slivers of ownership of the company, which makes you part owner of a company. That's pretty cool, right? But if you're gonna be part owner of a company, then you probably wanna know a little bit about the companies, right? You wanna make sure that it's worth you owning part of that company. You wanna make sure that they're gonna do well, that they're gonna be successful. There's a lot of data that goes into determining that. Which one should you dive in on and which one should you stay away from that could ultimately fail? This is where individual stocks come in. You can buy just one stock of one company and avoid every other company because you really believe in this one company. However, the danger of buying just one company stock is that if that company has a downturn or doesn't do well or ultimately fails and goes bankrupt, then you've just lost all of your investments in one foul swoop. Has anybody heard of Enron? So while there is potential to see very large gains if your one company does well, there's also the possibility that you could lose it all. So it's a high risk, potentially high reward opportunity, but there are ways to invest in the stock market that minimize that risk dramatically. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I just have to throw that out there in the disclaimer here. But for your typical beginner in investing in stocks, I do not recommend going with individual stocks. I recommend going with funds, specifically index funds, but we'll get there. So you definitely want to stay watching till the end. So breaking down what a fund is in terms of a mutual fund, think about it like buying flowers. If you buy one flower, you've bought one stock. But if that one flower dies, you have nothing. However, if you buy a whole bouquet of flowers, you not only have one stock, you have a whole bunch of stocks that are all part of the bouquet. When you're buying into a mutual fund, you're usually buying into a whole collection of stocks that have been bundled into one price and you pay $10 for the whole bundle instead of you know $2 for that flower, $7 for this flower, 20 bucks for this flower, $2 for that flower. It's just one price and it gets you all the flowers. Another way I've heard it described is like honeybees. Again, if you buy one bee and that bee dies, well then you put all this money towards your one bee, but now he's dead, you've lost it all. But if you buy a whole colony, a whole bee hive, now if any one, you know, one, two, three, a whole bunch of the bees don't do well, They've got all these other bees making up for it, so you're still getting your honey even though some of those bees haven't made it. But if you only bought one, it's a lot riskier. If that one bee does really well, hey, cool, but if that bee dies, you're in trouble. So I would say instead of buying individual flowers and bees, buy the bouquet, buy the beehive, buy the mutual fund. But there's a specific type of mutual fund that I recommend coming up. The kind that I don't recommend, now they're not all bad, some of them are good, but personally for beginners getting started, I would stay away from actively managed funds. The reason is because they have higher fees, usually around 1%. Now a 1% fee doesn't sound like a lot, but if you look at it over the course of long-term investment strategy, it can be a huge difference. Let's break it down and I'll show you right here. If you were to invest $100 over the course of 35 years, $100 a month for 35 years, you would end up at an 8% rate of return around $206,000, a little bit more than that if that rate uh, was consistent over that full time. If you had to pay a mutual fund manager 1% of that, then your returns actually are more like 7% instead of 8% because that extra percent is actually being paid out each year to the fund manager. So now after those same 35 years have elapsed, 
instead of having $206,000 in your account, you only have about $165,000 in your account. That 1% annual fee cost you almost $40,000. And $40,000 compared to the potential $206,000, that's almost 20% lost. So while you're looking at 1% thinking that's not very much, but over the course of 35 years, that turned into over 20% loss that you're paying somebody else to manage your money for you. So over the long haul, it can really kill your growth potential. Which brings us to index funds and why I think they're a good way to go for beginners. An index fund can do the same thing as an actively managed fund, except it simply mirrors an, a portion of the market, or in the case that I recommend, the entire market. And then you can benefit from that same fund analogy where if some companies do poorly but others do well, you're still gonna grow over time, but their fees are exponentially lower. In fact, if you look at VT Sachs, which is Vanguard's total market index fund, their fee is 0.04%. So instead of 1% or more to an actively managed fund manager, you're paying 0.04%. So if we use our previous example, if you're taking $100 a month for 35 years and that ends up going at an 8% interest rate or growth rate, you end up with about $206,000 at the end of that. Well, if you're removing 0.04% as a fee that you pay annually, then your returns over those same 35 years is actually about $205,000. So instead of losing 40 grand to a mutual fund manager, you've lost one, maybe $2,000 over that same period of time to pay for an index fund. So your growth potential is about the same as far as your total return, but the amount you lose in fees to an index fund is way less, way less. I would always do it this way. <laughs> so for me, that's the huge selling point of index funds over mutual funds that are actively managed. Now there are different kinds of index funds as well. You can have index funds that are just indexed towards a specific industry. So I again recommend something like an index that follows the S&P 500 or even broader than that, like a VT Sachs. VT Sachs, VT SAX is just the ticker symbol for this mutual fund that Vanguard offers that mirrors the total market. And another reason to go with index funds is because Warren Buffett bet hedge fund managers that the S&P 500 would actually outperform their investments over 10 years. And he got people to accept his bet of a million dollars to try to beat the market. And over 10 years, the S&P 500 index outperformed the hedge fund managers. Now there were years where the hedge fund managers did better. But over the course of the long haul, the full 10 years, they couldn't beat the market consistently over time. That's what managers try to say. They say, we'll pick things that are gonna beat the market. Hey, any given day, month, or year, they might. And that's what they're gonna to point to to say, well, this is how we've done it for this year and that year, and, and so we're super successful. But over the course of your retirement, like preparing for 10, 20, 30 years, no fund manager is gonna consistently beat the market over a 30 year period. At least a very, very small portion of them will, and the odds that you've picked the one that will are very low. So it's better to just stick with index fund investing for the long term, and that's a more secure way to guarantee growth over the long term investments. And who am I to argue with Warren Buffett, right? And then there are ETFs. These are called exchange traded funds. ETFs are like index funds with a few key differences. ETFs can be bought and sold throughout the day. So as you have probably seen on TV, throughout the day, a stock market price can go up or down. So with an ETF, ETF, you can buy the price at this second. You can look online at a, on a broker which offers ETFs and you can say, I want the price now. And then you buy it at that price. An index fund is bought and sold at the price that is set at the end of the trading day. So you can't buy it in the middle of the day at a specific price point that you want right this second. It doesn't work like that. But for long-term investors thinking 20 or 30 years, the specific and minimal differences between being able to pick the price uh, at, you know, two in the afternoon as opposed to the end of the day, it's gonna have a minimal effect over the course of your investments. So it's, it's kind of just a preference thing. And the other key difference is the minimum investment required to get started. So with an index fund, remember we talked about VT Sachs? The minimum requirement to invest in VT Sachs is $3,000. However, the ETF version of VT Sachs, you can invest for the price of a single share. And there are also brokers like Robinhood that allow you to purchase fractional shares. So if a, if a single stock share was $100, but you didn't have $100, you only had $20, 
then with Robinhood you could invest just $20 and buy one-fifth of one share. And so you can buy fractional shares, so you don't even have to have the price of a full share, and you definitely don't have to have the $3,000 minimum investment to invest straight into an index fund like BT Sachs. So either way, index funds and ETFs are a great way for beginners to get started in the market with an investment that is already diversified and already has low fees. So if you have any further questions about stocks, mutual funds, index funds, or ETFs, go ahead and throw that in the comments and smash that like button. And if you enjoyed this video, then you're definitely going to enjoy the video over here. I do have a playlist with even more content like this that you can enjoy, or you can head straight to the channel and check out all the videos I have for you. Find your path to financial freedom. Stay empowered, and we'll see you next time.